here we are again. Yeah, good morning. Uh, welcome to Thursday. And we're going to sing A Walk in Danger All the Way. We sang this last September. We'll sing it again because it's about temptation. And we're talking about temptation today. I'm growing in part of that being part of our growing in faith. An up and down walk. It's number 716. We'll sing the first two verses. I walk in danger all the way. The thought shall never leave me. That Satan, who has marked his prey, is plotting to deceive me. This foe with hidden snares may seize me unawares. If I should fail to walk and pray, watch and pray, I walk in danger all the way. <clears throat> you know, it occurs to me that we're singing verses 1 and 2, and there's none of those that have uh, God's rescue in there. That's the last three verses. I walk with angels, I walk with Jesus. Uh, maybe we better sing one and two and uh, five. How's that? <laughs> those three verses I thought of each of the characters in today's Bible story showing up in that verse it's kind of a sad story Sarah and Hagar Genesis 16 now Sarah Abram's wife had borne him no children she had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. <coughs> and Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, 
She looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her, Hagar, by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur, and he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing, for she said, Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son. And Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. So, uh, one of our frequent uh, participants, or viewers here, um, commented a few days ago, or last week, I think, uh, when we talked about Abram being in Egypt and receiving all these gifts from Pharaoh, including female, male and female slaves. And he said, Abram was involved in human trafficking. Yeah, actually, Abram was involved in human trafficking. And it was maybe not quite the what it is today, but it was bad stuff. But, but it's difficult for us to understand. This is a very different kind of society. All, everywhere around the world, every nation around the world, have a very different worldview than yours and mine. And personal autonomy was not the thing at the very top of the list. Being in the right place in your life, the right position in society, um, fulfilling your duty, um, being a, a member of the group was more important than being the lone individual and free, free to do what I want to do. That was not a big thing um, on everybody's list. <clears throat> so so uh, slavery was of a somewhat different character than what we envision it. Um, still not God's plan, still an evil thing, still the result of sin. But Hagar is one of those slaves that Abram and Sarah received. Uh, she was from Egypt, an Egyptian servant. And, and we've talked about how Abram is growing in faith, you know, and he, he made this journey God called him to go on, but then didn't think that God could take care of him in the land that he promised to him, so he went to Egypt. He lied while he was there and, and has this big to-do because he doesn't trust that the Lord will protect him. He's got to do it himself with cunning and deceit. Um, but then the Lord leads him back to Canaan and, and he begins to show some trust. He begins to, to show some growing maturity in faith, uh, which you would hope by the time he's in his seventies and eighties, right? But, uh, uh, here he has a setback. God has just told him in yesterday's reading that, you know, it shows him the stars in the sky, um, your descendants are going to be like this. And Abram's saying, well, I don't have a son, and if my, my servant's son is going to have to be, or my servant's going to have to be my heir. God says, no, no, it's going to be a son from your own body. And so this, he's got a, he's got a faith. It's not super strong. And now temptation comes in from the side. This is a problem. 
when, when we think that we're when we think that we're doing well, we think that we are uh, being in faith, um, things come in and knock us off course from not from inside ourselves all the time, but also from outside. Now it's his wife. <clears throat> like Adam was tempted by Eve. Now now uh, Abram is tempted by Sarai. She's impatient. They've been in the land for 10 years since they left Egypt, and she still has no child. Um, and what are they going to do? And so she su suggests that Abram take her servant, Hagar. This also, just because it happens in the Bible, doesn't mean that it's God's will or pleasing to God. But God works good things out of evil things. So now Hagar gets pregnant, and now Sarai's feelings change. Hagar acts uh, towards her uh, as if her, her mistress was dishonorable in her eyes. So a way of translating that. Uh, she no longer sees Sarai as so high as she did. Sarai is now down. I'm your equal now uh, because the master takes me as a wife. And Sarai didn't intend that. She just wanted a child. She doesn't want somebody else to be. Abram's wife. This is the problem. When we, when we break God's word, when we when we violate His intention, <coughs> His created plan, and a man and a woman would come together and the two would be one flesh, then everything gets complicated. And so Abram has fallen to temptation. Now he falls to temptation again. <clears throat> he listens to Hagar to Sarai, and he says, "Well, do with your servant what you wish," and she's cruel to her. Out of her own insecurity. We're familiar with that, aren't we? And so Hagar runs off. But God sees her. She is an Egyptian, right? She is, we have no reason to believe that because she has been a servant in, in Abram's large household that she now believes in the one true God. But, but God comes to her anyway. God comes to her and he not only rescues her, <clears throat> he sends her back and he says, Submit to your mistress. Once again, a word that's not very popular today, but uh, better understood then. Take your place and, and fulfill your function in this household, and I will bless you. God, uh, his, uh, his prophecy here for Ishmael doesn't sound entirely uh, happy as far as being against his kinsmen. He'd be against Abram's family, and actually Hagar might not mind that. The idea that her son would grow up to oppose Abram's son. Um, but he would be prospered. He would have many children and would grow himself into a nation. And unfortunately, of course, the seeds of future problems for the Israelites are planted here. Um, that there is this division because Abram was disobedient. And, and our sins have long shadows as well. She says he is the God of seeing for he has seen her and looked after her. So we see Abram still struggling in faith, still not all the way there, right? Um, believing, but, oh Lord, help my unbelief. Messing things up, and yet God still works with him, still, still is working in this very soap opera family, to, to bring about his promise and a savior eventually to bless the world. I don't know what God's doing in your life today. <clears throat> I know it's probably a mess in some ways. And, and you may be thinking, you know, I'm, doing, I'm going along in my faith. I'm in these devotions every day. Uh, Satan will find some other way, as we sang in our hymn. There, he's, he's looking for some way to knock you off the track. It won't be the end of the world if you if you are deceived. No, the one who sees you will be watching, not to catch you out, but to catch you when you fall, uh, to save you, to bring you back, to restore you, and still to work in your life for his purpose. He'll get it done. Heavenly Father, I'm so weak. We make so many mistakes. We say the wrong thing. 
we're not where we should be and, and we are where we shouldn't be. And our thoughts go off to places they shouldn't go. Lord, how in the world, if, if, if your plan depended upon us getting it all right, what a mess it would be. Thank you, Lord. Your plan doesn't depend upon us, but upon you and your faithfulness. Teach us, help us to grow in faithfulness today. Send us your Holy Spirit and repair what we have broken. Restore us to the path and lead us on once again. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.